my name is Nicole. I'm a UX researcher at Ableton. Uh, my colleague Johannes is going to tell you in a minute what we actually do. And today we want to talk about something we at Ableton deeply care about. It's working together. It's like doing user research as a team sport. And in our talk, Johannes will quickly uh, yeah, show you what products we make, uh, where we started doing user research and where we are today. Then I will talk about um, our kind of latest product and how we run user testing in the development phase. And uh, yeah, Johannes is going to give you an outlook where we want to go. So with no further ado, I hand over to Johannes. I try this. You try this, good. Hi, um, my name is Johannes. And I also work on user research at Ableton. I work mainly in the software products, uh, a little bit on our hardware projects. But I also like to think about the overall strategy, how we do user research. So um, before diving in and telling you how we work, I quickly want to show you what we are working on. So in short, we make yeah, hardware and software instruments for musicians and music producers. Uh, we make a software product that's called Ableton Live. And with Live, you can create beats and melodies. You can record instruments, edit your music, finish it, and release it on SoundCloud or somewhere else. And you can also perform the music live on stage. And we have a hardware product called Ableton Push, and it works together with Live, and it gives you really this physical and tactile experience that you have with real instruments. And yeah, we actually just released the second version of Push last week, and the users seem extremely happy, which makes us happy, of course. And so these instruments are used to create music in studios, which can be a bedroom studio at home. It can be a more high-end professional studio with a lot more gear and other tools. But these instruments are also used to perform music live, and some pe people do that alone. But it's also used in band settings, where musicians come together, um, playing together as a group, and um, yeah, sometimes using more traditional instruments like drums and guitars, but also using music software and hardware. So I want to talk a little bit about how we started. Um, yeah, around five years ago, Nicole and I started working on usability and user experience at Ableton. And yeah, we would run usability tests with a few users and then mostly on our own. And we would write really detailed reports and then hand them over to the teams and product owners. But often, yeah, nothing happened. The issues didn't get fixed, the design was still broken, and something else is always more important. Um, and that's really painful. So I have a question for the audience. Who has ever written a really detailed report that had almost no impact on the actual product? Awesome. So yeah, you kind of, you share the feeling, right? Um, so you start to realize things have to change somehow, and we need to work on things together with the teams that make the actual products. And actually, this is quite related to how I personally feel about creating things. Um, so I myself make music with Life and Push, and often alone in the studio, which is fun, but I also always played in bands and orchestras all my life. And this is about like musicians coming together and playing together. And there's probably something we can learn from that, or I feel there's something we can learn from that, because there's something like magical happening when musicians play together and you create something that's bigger and uh, uh, more immersive than, than what everyone can do um, just on their own. So you kind of connect on every beat and you can communicate on deeper levels even without words. And there's really a different energy to it. And I call this, yeah, you get into the groove. And I have to say when this happens, it's a lot of fun. Um, but as you said, yeah, it doesn't always happen and uh, it takes a lot of band practice to get there. Um, yeah, I can say that. And you also need an environment where you can just jam and you can actually, yeah, you have the freedom to come up with new ideas. And so I think, yeah, the same goes for developing products. Um, so let's look at where we are today. So a lot has changed for us in the recent years and the company has grown in numbers. And I want to show you a few of the key things of how we work today. So we have gone from being yeah, these lone experts working for days on our own and are now embedded members in cross-functional teams. And there we work on enabling these teams to do user research. And our processes have changed from waterfall models to yeah, a much more agile and lean environment, as we already heard here. And also for us, Scrum, we use Scrum, um, was introduced around five years ago. It was actually a really painful process. Um, so actually it feels a bit more like this. Um, yeah, it's a really long process and there are many individual steps that the whole organization basically has to take to get there. And one thing is you definitely can't do it all at once. I mean, that's how we feel. And a good way can be to develop lighthouse projects, for example, um, where one team starts to work out really user-centered 
And basically, yeah, you see really good results coming out of this and then it kind of starts spreading around the company because everyone wants to have that. So for me, it's really a lot about patience and it's also a lot about trust. Um, I mean, trusting the goal that you know it's the right direction, but also trusting your team members and trusting the rest of the company. So today there are um, more than 70 people working in our development teams that include software developers, hardware developers, UI and UX designers, and product experts. And they work in small teams of three to six people, um, and they're also part of larger focus areas, and these are based around our core products and the core services that we have. And each of these focus areas now has like one person that takes on the role of the user researcher. But what we don't have anymore is a central design or research team. But instead, yeah, we have a user research guild to make sure we still talk to each other, of course. Um, and again, the user research guild is not a team, but we are a community of practice. So um, we kind of share the same thing that we do and um, we are across the company and we exchange quite a lot. So we have a Slack channel where we chat and we send around interesting insights and videos. And we also meet once a month to talk about practices, tools and methods and there we share what we have learned and we help each other out. And sometimes we also pair up for research projects and yeah, we help out with planning, conducting the actual user test, uh, wrapping the results up with the teams. And this way the information flows across the company and there are a lot of like interesting sparks happening between the teams. And something that's also important to us, um, especially when you talk about lean and agile development, is experimentation. So we try a lot of things um, and evolve them over time. Of course, with our products on the one side by making early prototypes and testing them and iterating over them. But it's also relevant for the processes. Um, and I think yeah, you really have to try things out and see what works. You can't just take something from a book and try to implement it one and one. Also, every single focus area and every single team that we have um, is really different. They have different processes, different problems that they work on, but they also have different cultures. Like some are more energetic and forward thinking, others are maybe a bit more reluctant and need more security and so you really need to understand that culture and adapt your methods to that. And also, yeah, we don't think of ourselves as owning the research, but our role is much more to enable insights um, um, for the teams and to build the knowledge and intuition for the developers, designers and product experts. And also we are not the decision makers, but what we do is help the team to make really good educated decisions by giving them the right information and helping them analyze the information in the right way. So yeah, we took all that we have learned about user research in our very specific context um, and put that into some principles that guide our work. I mean, these are not rules, but just principles. But yeah, they're also strongly based on the Lean UX mindset that we already heard about. Um, but they also come from the special challenge of building a musical instrument because musicians really want to invest in that, both time and money. And we have learned that this can be quite different from building a website, a car, or maybe a healthcare device. Yeah, so these are our principles. Um, we try to keep things lightweight. So we think of the smallest insights that we can give the teams to improve the UX of the product. And we try to test rather small, but we test more often and more regularly. And we start early on continue. So yeah, we try to start the research at the beginning of each project where we go out and explore the world and then it goes on and on even after the product is released, of course. And we want to get real. That means we want to talk to real users in real contexts as often as possible. So it actually means we leave the building quite a lot and go on field trips here in Berlin, but also in other places. Yeah, and here's how that context can look like. So you see a lot of interesting gear and tools and it tells you a lot about workflows and user needs. Yeah, and even our CEO joins us sometimes, um, which is cool, and he takes a really deep look at how musicians work nowadays, and it's very inspiring to do that. And we need to think long-term, so using a musical instrument is really a long-term experience. So users invest a lot of time and practice into getting better and becoming more proficient, so we need to understand how something feels over time, how discoverable is it, how learnable is it over time. We make our user research, uh, the research visible, so we share it so everyone can learn from it. We make posters, blog posts, have chat channels, email lists, and so on. We adapt our methods, as we said, um, we try things out, and we keep what, what works for each team. And last but not least, yeah, we try to collaborate um, with the teams as much as possible. And now I hand over to Nicole, and she will show you how we make this actually happen and what kind of tools we use for that. Video. Yeah, we have a quick video that shows the product we were working on for the last couple of months, and I'd like to show it to you.
Yeah. Um, the product is called Ableton Link, and what you can do is it allows you to play in time over a wireless network with multiple devices. And I mean, playing time sounds kind of simple, but it wasn't uh, possible before, at least not in the security. So, um, and, and in the next few minutes, um, I'd like to quickly show you how we run user tests in the development team. So, but first, let me give you a bit of context. So, this is, this is my team. And they are awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm really lucky with my team. So I always feel a bit bad because they are really enthusiastic and want to do all the user research and want to see the people and talk to them. And uh, yeah, I, I realize that not every everyone is, you know, so lucky. So we have yeah one product owner, four developers, and one one designer. And um, our process is pretty simple. So we're really keeping it lightweight. Um, don't be surprised. So we make a plan, we run the test and tell the story, and we do everything with the team. So in the development phase, everyone in the team has like ideas how people are going to use the feature or, or a special um, part of the feature. And in the in the kickoff meeting before every test, we we um, yeah we try to make them explicit and write them down and prioritize the hypothesis. And this is kind of the basis for. Our, um, uh, interview guide and we also collect everything on Google Drive so that even team members who can't be there because we are a pretty small team just for, for developers and you know not everyone can always be in every meeting so people who can't be there can can like voice their opinion in the Google Doc and just write comments and we have conversations there what we also do is like we have fixed roles so everyone kind of feels responsible we have like the moderator which is pr pretty clear we have like observers who like really sign up to be an observer and we have to keep off minutes which I see more as a master of minutes because for me it's like super important role and um, yeah, then we have like the next step is run the test. This is the day when people come in, so this is the fun part. Uh, we try to, to have like six user tests spread over two days. And after every like session, we have like a short wrap up to see if there's anything we can uh, fix for the next or like improve already for the next test. Not technology, but you know, questions more. And on the end of day two, we have like a bigger wrap up session so, and this is our office, and um, when people come in, we have like a dedicated user research studio, and from there we stream via, we have like a homemade streaming system called Wind, which is based on Wirecast, and we stream to the observation room where my team is, and we also stream to all the other desks in the office. So everyone at Ableton can just turn on Wind and just watch what's happening. So. Here's another overview. So we have the studio, we have the observation room, we have the desks, we have wind, which is streaming. And as a back channel, we use Slack, which is um, a messaging app so that people can also ask questions during the test. And this is how the streaming looks like. Okay, in the, in the case of Ableton Link, we have like two laptops running live, which you see here, laptop one, laptop two. We have like a webcam. We have like an editor where like the Master of Minutes can take notes. And we have chocolate, of course, because you never know what's happening. And uh, now I'd like to show you how, how user test actually looks like. So. Nice. Yeah. OK. I'll bring my yeah, other drum. Nice. And then I guess I'll bring my wacky melody. Go for it. <laughs> How about if we think that we have to both press record to make this happen? All right. Time. Get ready. Like ready? count it in? Yeah. Three. One. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wait, three, two, one, or one, two, three? Or one, two, three, four? Uh, one, two, three, four? Yeah, okay, fine. I don't know what the tempo is. One, two, three, four. Didn't work. Okay, I guess we're in now. But, yeah. now. but now you're recording that, you know. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Wrong scene again. So lots of insights in this short video. <laughs> um, during the test, my team can like write comments or questions on Slack. 
And what they also do is write insights down on stickies, or at least a few months, or yeah. The first time I think we tried to write stuff down on stickies, but my team is so enthusiastic, we kind of ended in a mess. So it was just like we had so many stickies and the wrap up session was like took forever. And what we tried then is um, we tried to move to formalize it and move to Trello. So we used a Trello board and every column is like a hypothesis. And um, we used labels to associate uh, the Trello cards to people who tested our feature. And I mean, this kind of worked pretty good during the test, but in the wrap up phase, it was just like, where's all the energy? We were all staring at this thing and not moving around sticky. So it's not, you know, it's not the end of the story. So, and the last step is we, we tell the story uh, with the team to all Abletons. Um, yeah, what, what, what I just uh, said, all the insights that got collected, we just, just you know, I mean, I don't, probably don't have to tell you what's hap happening here. Um, yeah, we just cluster everything right down to do, see what we can test next time or what we need to test, or, you know, action points or also how to run the test better next time. Um, yeah. The problem with video, so I left this in here intentionally, so we are lightweight, but video editing slows us down. What we actually want to do is like cut every user session, put it on our internal block, share it with everyone, but doesn't happen because time. Um, if it happens, it sometimes looks like this. We have funny images and um, yeah, that's our process. And to end this little case study on a high note, I want to share my favorite show off comment from a musician. He said, really, it's magic, it's not technology about Link, you should check it out. And this was my reaction. This is, <laughs> yeah. And so Johannes is going to wrap it up for you. Thanks. Yeah, I just want to take one minute to summarize the thoughts. Um, so today we wanted to talk about collaboration and doing uh, research together. And yeah, we hope that you take something away from that, maybe try something out in your team as well. So we think that doing user research in a collaborative way is the way to go if you're inside Agile teams. Um, it's much more efficient, we are less frustrated, it's actually fun and things get worked on, which is great. And I think that's because the teams take the ownership, and it's not us. But also, as with playing instruments in a band, it takes a lot of practice, um, both for the individual member and for the group as a whole. And also, of course, we feel we are not there yet and there's a lot of work ahead of us. Um, so one of the next steps at Ableton is we want to have small teams that are even more autonomous and have even more freedom to build features that they kind of think are the right features, um, which is really important for innovation. But yeah, I mean, we want to enable them to do their own user research, but we want to have the same kind of standard and quality that we have when doing this and the right kind of methods. And that's a really big challenge, of course. Um, I don't have a good answer yet. I mean, that's what we have to work on. I think we will yeah, work on more tools and, and kind of soft guidelines and do a lot of coaching with the teams to make this happen and make sure they don't get too biased in their results. And yeah, the more research will happen inside these like smaller teams, the more insights we will of course collect, but a lot of these insights will easily get lost, especially if you're so lightweight. So we kind of need to figure out a way of how we can yeah, collect all this insight and uh, share them with the teams, and, but also being able to back, uh, dive back into it whenever we need it especially when we work on more and more products, which might happen. Because, yeah, at Ableton, we want to grow as a collective and not just as individuals. But yeah, I think that's a pretty good challenge to work on and should be fun. So thanks for your attention and yeah, time for questions and discussion. Yes, uh, thank you very much for this inspiring talk. Are there any questions here? Or do you just want to listen to the music? <laughs> no more questions. Ah, one question is here and one here. Hi, thanks for the presentation, really nice. Uh, what is, is it um, frightening you from being uh, autonomous, having autonomous teams? Sorry, what is driving What us? is the biggest fear from your, in your teams from being uh, autonomous? Because there was a question mark at the end. You mean our fear? Um, yeah. Teams get more autonomous? Um, yeah, your, your fear from the development point of view. Well, I mean, what could happen? Maybe, you know, you don't have the same standards for UX. It might just be developers who like to go really deep into technology. And 
they might create something that's maybe not as yeah as usable as we would like to have it. But well, I don't know if that was your question. Or, uh, the question is that do you fear that it, it could be not efficient or it could be too experimental? Um, I actually think it's the way to go. I really support it. I think it's it's a really good challenge and I think it will really help us to innovate because there are less like boundaries and I mean I have to be honest, our developers they're all super smart and I mean they also like to do user research and think about design and um, many of us are musicians so we kind of know the problems that we want to solve so I we just trust them to be honest. So no, I, I'm actually not afraid but it's, we still want to work with them and help them. I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. Here we have another question. Yeah, so my felicitations for your great progress. Uh, you, I think you really achieved something amazing here. Um, I'm interested in how you, how you scale all this, how, how you coordinate your efforts across all these different um, slices that you have shown, uh, which, which you kind of segmented your company in. Because you are quite large, so it's quite challenging, I guess. Mm. I mean, um, Johannes talked about the user research guild we have. So we, we have like this um, community of practice and we share like we meet mo once a month and we, we talk about what we what everyone works on and what methods we use and where we fail and um, what we all, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, maybe I could try this or yeah. So this kind of, what's this your question? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think, yeah, maybe. I mean, one other point, like the, the bigger you get, I guess, um, the more important it is to have a kind of vision and mission, which is what we have. Um, it's actually called yeah, Bliss, Breakthrough and Belonging. So this is what we, yeah, how we create our products, like we create them for users. We want to give them bliss by making the studio into an instrument, breakthrough by making them better musicians. And uh, belonging is like by being part of music culture. And I think that's really important um, because it aligns the the vision for all of these different focus areas and then I think you can actually leave a lot of freedom and in practical terms again yeah the guild is, is something and that's something we have for design as well the designers come together quite often the developers come together quite often and of course we have product owners that meet in the middle and they kind of formulate their visions as well so we have another question um, so I have a question myself as uh, first uh, good good speech good talk uh, makes me want to work at your place uh, especially for the chocolate. But now you were talking uh, about you collaborate and how you share your results with all Abletons. And uh, my question is uh, why? And uh, don't get me wrong, I, I know why, but is it just a mere uh, showing of results or is there discussion? Is there some kind of outcome of that? Um, what's your uh, goal by sharing it? I think we believe in cross-pollination. You know, you see, you see something and then you work on something different, but then you realize, oh, actually this could have an impact on, or this is interesting, or, I mean, we don't have so many products, so we, you know, everyone is kind of working on similar stuff and we think it's good to share the, what we learn, yeah. So, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you again. <laughs> That's, uh,